Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Reverend Essie coming at you on the 30th of July, 2017, the last Sunday of July of 2017. I hope you're doing well. I hope all is going good with you and going good for you. You're walking in the favor and the grace of the Almighty God. If you woke up this morning, you have some grace. Amen. You have some favor. Amen. And I'm coming at you today from New Birth Ministries, and I call this micromana, just a little bit of word. So if you don't mind, I'd like to open up with prayer and invite God in. If you don't invite God in, then you're doing it all by yourself. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for being God all by yourself. I thank you for being our God, the one and only, the highest, the God of all gods, the King of all kings, Jesus, and the Lord of all lords. Thank you for being the creator creator of all things. Without you, there is nothing that was made without you. Everything that exists is because of you. And we thank you, Father, for the good. We thank you for the bad. We thank you for everything. If it wasn't for the bad, we wouldn't learn. If it wasn't for the good, we'd have no hope. Thank you for being our hope. And thank you for being there for us, whether we deserve you or not. You're still there for us because you are love. Your word even tells us God is love. And this is what you want us to do. You are love to us. You're lovable to us and with us. And you want us to love one another. You are love. We cannot say that we love you if we don't love one another. There's so many people going around, Father God, and they're doing the Christian thing, the holy thing, what they call the, the, the godly thing, and they, they're, they're doing things in church. They're preaching and teaching and miming and, and, and serving and, and doing whatever they can in the house of God, but when they get outside the house of God, they duck and dodge one another and don't even want to speak and say hi. This is not of you. Father God, we have a long way to go. A long way to go. We have to learn how to treat each other correctly before we can attempt to treat the world. So God, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit more and more and more. Let us get more and more and more of the teachings of the Holy Spirit, the unctions of the Holy Spirit. Use us, use us more. Father, forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for anything that would separate us from you and cause the Holy Spirit to to back away from us and, and not use us fully the way he wants to use us. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us. And we thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach. We thank you, Jesus to Christ for caring and loving us so much that you sent a teacher, another comforter you called him, just so we can learn. And I ask that we give us more. Everybody's asking for more money, more vehicles, more houses, more land, more love, more this, more that. And and, and what we really, really need, God, is more of you, Yahweh, hallelujah. Yehovah, we need more of you, more God, more Ruach HaKadosh, more, more of the Spirit. We need more of your breath breathing into our lives, breathing into our minds and our hearts, Father. And those that have uh, black spots on their hearts, those that won't forgive, Father God, we lift them up to you. Those that want to be forgiven, those that want to be loved, but they refuse to forgive and they refuse to love. And some continue to harbor hatred and jealousy and and disagreement and, and unforgiveness and bitterness, Father God. We lift them all up to you, even if it's us ourselves. Forgive us, Father, for we know not what we do. We see what you meant when you said that on a, on the cross, Yeshua. We see what you meant when you said that. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And also forgive the ones that do not realize that we are the new sanctuary. We are the new ark. You dwell in us. You want to dwell in us. The question is, will we allow you to dwell in us? Father God, thank you for for being with us and living within us and teaching the things that we need to know to continue on and be victorious, which is very important that we are victorious in this life. And for each and every person that's listening to this, Father God, I ask that you put victory into their hearts, victory into their minds, Father God, and, and change. Give them the mind of Christ instead of the mind of flesh Use me now here with Father God. Use me now so that someone will hear something from you today and know that there is hope. 
to know that they are vic- already victorious. They've already won. No matter what it looks like, no matter how many tears they shed on their pillows at night or during the day or sitting at their desk at work or raising their children and cooking and crying at the same time. God let them know that there is hope in you. You've already, you already have that situation in your hands. You saw it. There's so many people that think For some strange reason, they think, I think the enemy has us believing that you don't see the things that go on with us. You don't see the things that are happening. If you're in us and around us, then you see it all. There's nothing that you cannot see. And we thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' holy name, use me, Father. Use me. Amen. Amen. I want to start reading from, I'll be uh, teaching from Ephesians chapter 2 today. And I'm going to start with verse 8. And I'll start reading if you want to ch- if you want to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. And I'll start reading from 8 and I'll read to 22. And we'll see what the Spirit of the Most High has to say to us today. Amen? Amen. The sun, we finally got some sunshine today here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I hope you have some sunshine where you're at. Continue to pray for those that are being flooded out. There's people being flooded out in places that aren't even used to being flooded. This is what's happening. You know, God said in his word that these things were going to happen. You know, there'll be earthquakes in diverse places. That means different places. And there's going to be floods and famine. And there's going to, there's a lot coming. And everyone's comfort, you know, people are comfortable around the world. And the Bible even says as people are marrying, getting married and eating and feasting and being merry and being happy, these things are going to happen. As you live your life, you're going to hear these things. We got so much rain. The whole, I believe the whole month of, I want to say this whole summer since spring has been raining in western Pennsylvania area. And and every now and then we get a little bit of sunshine. I think we may have had maybe three or four hot days in a row since the beginning of, of summer. So, hey, you know, pray for every... Let's pray for one another, amen, that we remain safe. Amen. So I'll start with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, which says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves... It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has foreordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye be in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. That's where the word came from. Okay, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, hath broken down a middle wall, partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple unto the Lord, in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of God, for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And I hope uh, 
Uh, God adds a blessing to the reading of the word. His word is awesome. There's always a blessing in the reading of God's word. Whether you read it out loud, whether you read it to yourself, meditate on it, concentrate on it, tell somebody about it. Amen. There's a blessing in the word of God. God's spirit is in the word. That's why there's so many devils out there trying to say that the Holy Bible is not holy and it's not God's true word. And if you believe in it, then you're crazy. And and and, and, and this is what they're trying to say, that, that the word of God is not true. We understand there's been some words and sentences tampered with or changed throughout the, the years, 2,000 plus years. Okay, but when you read it in the spirit of the Most High God, he'll give you the correct meaning of every sentence. God will, the Spirit of God will explain to you what every sentence means. You read it word by word, sentence by sentence, and you will get the meaning. There are some people who say, oh, I've read the Bible from the beginning to end. No big deal. I know the whole Bible. Okay, some people have what they call a photogenic memories, but that doesn't mean that they're Christians, 100% Christian because if you can read the Bible from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation and the dictionary, <laughs> you know, but that doesn't mean that you read it in the spirit of the Most High God. If you didn't read the Bible in the spirit, then you read absolute, you It doesn't mean a thing to you because he is our teacher, the Holy Spirit of God, holy, the Holy Spirit, as some people say, or Holy Spirit, as some people say, some people get so, you know, literate about it, but you know, the Holy Spirit of the Most High God will show you exactly what these words mean. Starting with verse 8, depends on where your heart is at. If your heart is in the Word and you want God to show you something, He'll show you something. But if you're a know-it-all and you just want to show people that you read the Bible and that you know every every sentence and every word, then you're not going to get anything out of it. The blessing is not in it. Verse 8 says, for by, now, for by grace are you saved through faith in that not of yourselves. And then it says it is a gift of God. Here we go. When someone gives you a gift, it's because they want to give it to you. I want everybody to understand that God has given you grace and he wants you to continue to get stronger in your faith because these are gifts that he has given to you. They're a gift. And it's not because you're all that in a bag of chips or anything like it. God is love. God loves us. That's why he made us. God's not going to create something like that. A human being made in his own image and hate his, he'd be hating himself. He's in us. God loves you. I don't care what you did in your life. I don't care if you're worse than your neighbors, worse than any member in your family. I don't care what God doesn't care what you did. He sent his son to die on a cross and shed his blood for whatever that was that you did. Do you know the Bible says that when Jesus was on a cross and shed his blood, he became, listen, okay, he did this for you. He became sin. For us, all sin, everything, anything you can think of, Jesus didn't leave anything out, even if it's sexual. Yeah, but oops, people don't want to touch that one. (laughs) Isn't it a part of it? If you're having a sexual problem, if you're having a financial problem, you're ripping and stealing and robbing and carrying on, okay, murder, abortion, Lying, cheating, stealing, drinking, drunkards and people who abuse alcohol and and, and pills and anything that you have or can do in your life. Jesus died for that. And let me tell you something else. Be very, very careful of the people who may not really like you all that much or may be a little jealous of you. And and they'll say, oh, well, oh, what you've done is really bad. Oh, I, I don't know about that one. No, no, no. Trust me. Listen to me. God is using me right now to tell you that nothing, there's nothing that you have done that cannot be covered by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus to Christ, that cannot be forgiven by him. Okay, remember that. Wear it well, wear it like a badge on your, on your chest, and let everybody know that you know who you are. As, as my pastor once told me years ago, know that you know that you know. 
that you've been forgiven, start all over and ask God to give you the mind of Christ and he'll believe you. He'll, he'll help you. If you ask God to help, God will help you. God, he's, God is not the type of person, get it, person, because he is. God is not the type of person where he is going to let you ride. He's not going to help you and just say, well, you know, uh, uh, Bob asked today for help. Look at Jesus and, and look at Jesus and say, well, you know, uh, Bob asked today for asked me today for help. But I don't know. I'm just mm, I don't think he No, I'm not ready for that yet. God's not that kind of God. You ask him for help. He'll help you because of what grace. God gives us grace and mercy. Mercy is not receiving. I always tell people, think of court. Mercy of, is not receiving something that you do deserve. God gave you mercy. You deserved, actually all of us, we all deserve to die. None of us deserve to be here on this earth experiencing anything. We deserve to die, but we're not, right? God gave us mercy to live, okay? And he gave us grace. Grace is receiving something that you do not deserve. Mercy is not receiving something that you do deserve, Okay, now, God, in other words, God, when God gave us grace, he gave it to us. Guess why? He gave it to us because he simply wanted to. <laughs> Amen? God gave you grace to make it through. No matter what happens in your life, you have grace, capital G. You have grace to make it through. Now, if you don't make it through a trial, a temptation, or whatever's happening in your life, that's because you gave up, you kicked grace out the window, and you figured, what? What, what, what does it matter? And when you do that, don't blame it on God. If you don't win the battle. Okay, verse 9, not of works lest any man should boast. God's telling you right there, he did it because he wanted to do it, it's through him. And he said, in verse 9, not of works lest any man should boast. Because if you could save yourself, there would be so many, if we could save ourselves, this would be a world of boasting, bragging people and everybody would be upset because everybody would be, be jealous or angry or mad or upset or something with one another. Okay, so none of us can say that we are alive because we did it. But there are non-believers. There are people that don't believe in God. Uh, and they say, well, I, I, I actually heard, I, throughout the years, I've, you'd be surprised at the things that I've heard, testimonies or people calling me or something or messaging me on, on the internet or something and, and, and telling me their stories. And there's people, I've heard people actually say that I, I don't need God, I don't need Jesus. I, and I even, I even heard people say, I, I love God. Oh yeah, I believe in God, but I don't believe in that Jesus junk. And I asked a young man one time, I said, well, who do you think got you up in the morning? Me. Okay, so God helped, yeah. Um, who do you think got you that good job? Me. I got it. How did you get the house? Me. The car? Me. You know? And And there are actually, as silly as that might sound, there are a lot of people in this instance, I can say a lot. There are a lot of people out there, men, a lot of them, that want to take, they're taking the, the credit for things that God did for them. They're, they're, they're taking, they're taking as, as Malachi says, and it's not just talking about money, Malachi, I believe, 3, where he says, will a man rob God? Yeah, man will rob God. And I'm not just talking about in finances. A man robs God and says, yeah, I did this. God will do something for a man, for a person, man or woman. And they will go around telling people it was them. I'm telling you now, everything that happened to me in my life, every time I moved, God took me to a better place, a better space, a better area. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I'm not that stupid. I'm not that stupid to try to take the glory away from God. At beauty, the beauty that God placed in my life, he put it there. The money God, that I got, God put it there. The vehicles that I got, my children, my loves, my family, my friends, God put 
them there. I did nothing of myself. I've been a singer all my life. I'm written in Cannesburg, Pennsylvania's bicentennial book as a, as a, as a black, as, as an African American, the first African American female singer from this, from Washington County, PA, from this area. I didn't do that. God did. I'm listed on uh, not to I I I me me me. I'm just saying this is an example. Um, a friend of mine uh, that sings. He's been a singer for years. He sang under uh, Bobby Vinton and, and Perry Como. He called me one day, and he said, "Do you know you're on uh, what is that called Wikipedia or something?" And I said, I'm, "I am for what?" He says, "This is the first African American singer from the Cannesburg, Pennsylvania area, Washington County area." And I said, get out of here. I didn't say, I did that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if it wasn't for me. (laughs) So people need to stop doing that. God took me there. God did all this for me. The good things I have, what I find, the things that I find, the friendships that I have, God did that for me. The loves that I had, some lasted, some didn't. God did that for me. Okay, you know, we need to give God credit for everything. I can, I have a habit of saying, Baruch Atai Adonai. It's bless God. I bless God in the morning, I bless Him in the evening, and I feel guilty when I don't say it. I have, I have to re- uh, forgive myself because there's times where I forgot to say it or something, you know, I'm not meaning to. But I love to bless the Lord. You don't have to say Baruch Atai Adonai if you don't want to. Adonai is one of His names. Okay, you just say, bless the Lord. Like old people, you ever hear old people say, bless God, bless God, amen. Bless the Lord, get into that habit. That's why they did it. And that's why they lived long enough for you to hear it. And verse 10, for we are his workmanship. See, God created us. We are his workmanship. He made us. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God has before ordained before, uh, I mean, that we should walk in them. God in ordained it. God made the specs. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you know much about um, building houses or carpentry, or, but they, they have something called specs. They have to. You just can't build a house on a whim. Well, I guess some people have, you know, like out in a country, country folks or something or whatever. But you you make specs. You gotta you gotta but you gotta make lines where the doors are gonna be and and where the basement's gonna be and where the walls are gonna be, where you're gonna put the bathroom at. You gotta sketch all that out first. God made the specs. Just think, when you think about your life, and guess what? God made the specs. He made what color your eyes, he created the color of your eyes. God said your eyes were going to come out this color. God said that your skin tone, your fingernails, God created you. He had you in his specs. You were his workmanship. Verse 11, wherefore remember that ye being in times past, and okay, in old times when you were Gentile, sinning and carrying on, it says in your flesh, you were you, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Okay, years ago, before you got saved, before you accepted the Lord, you was out there sinning, all of us were. We were all like, don't let somebody tell you, oh, I've been great all my life. I never did anything wrong. Because the Bible says, if a man says he has not sinned, he's a liar. So don't let anybody tell you they haven't sinned. Everybody came from somewhere. Everybody had their high school days, their college days, their first kiss, and God only knows what else. Their first toke, their first toke, okay? <laughs> their first snort, their first, their first drink, their first cuss word. Everybody did something somewhere, okay? Verse 12, that at the time you were without Christ, see? When you were out there sinning, you didn't have, you wouldn't think about Jesus. He was out there sinning. And you know, sin is good. Some sin and people sin because to them at that time, okay, listen to what I'm saying. To them at that time, comma, sin is good. That's why they do it. Okay? Because they're without Christ. They have yet to taste the goodness of life, the goodness that God wants them to feel and taste. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, 
See, people who are out there sinning have no hope. That's why you see so many people that want to commit suicide. They feel bad in their lives or, or you know, I don't want to live anymore. And this is my life is is my life sucks or, you know, I'm a I'm a bad husband. I'm a bad wife and I'm a bad kid and blah, 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 because they have no hope. They were out there sinning so bad. Do you know that sin blinds people? Sin will blind you. Sin blinds people to the point. It's like putting on a pair of sunglasses. And, you know, you don't even need them. It covers everything. Sin blinds people to the point where they feel, they can't feel the true love and fresh air that God wants them to smell and feel and have. They're so busy sinning. They're so, they're out. You know, the Bible says you are you. you uh, God told people a certain amount of people who are out there sinning and, and living bad lives. He said, "You are of your father, the devil." So yeah, there's two fathers, so to speak. There's an earthly father. His name is Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. And there's people. He is their father. And then there's a father above, the father, the creator of all things, the good, the good daddy. The daddy that, that takes care of us and pays his child support, so to speak, okay? Okay? Which father are you going to pick? See, but B.C., before Christ, you were out there sinning. Now, you're, it's after, after uh, Christ. You know, you should be clean, have a new mind, change your life. And it says, strangers from the covenants of promise have no hope and without God in the world. But now, okay, things are changing now. We had spiritual poverty and godlessness and hopelessness before. But now that you have accepted Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ as your Savior, which we need. But now in Christ Jesus, you are sometimes, you were sometimes far off and made, but now you're made near to him by his blood, the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. This is why when you watch the Ten Commandments and, and God told uh, Moses and him to put blood over the door on the doorposts and everything, they were covered by the blood. They were covered by the blood of the lamb. And if you notice, death passed right on by. And the only people that death killed were the ones that, watch this, okay, all you non-believers, they weren't covered by the blood of the Lamb. And death entered their homes and killed them, their firstborn, regardless of the age, okay? Some of the husbands were firstborn, so you can only imagine how many died. When you look, listen, when you are not covered by the blood, when you don't believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, when you are not covered, you live a very unmeaningful short life. Miserable. Don't be miserable. Be covered by the blood. Put the blood on your on your doorposts. OK, put them, put the blood on the, the 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 gates of your 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 eye gates, your ear gates, your mouth. Put the blood all over you. Be covered. As I say, you're in good hands with all state, right? Well, I'm going to tell you now, you're in good hands with Jesus Christ. Okay, and it goes on for he is your peace. Okay, he has made both one and hath broken down the middle wall partition between us. Jesus put, brings unity, he brings unity into, into the body. Jesus came and brought unity. There was hell and confusion before him. And he came and brought unity, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Listen, Jesus even changed some things. He didn't change the Ten Commandments, but he changed the Mosaic Law. Okay, this is where the ceremonial law was abolished, completely abolished. You know, like not eating shrimp. People kill me talking about shrimp is the, what do they call it? Shrimp is the the cockroach of the sea. As it looks like, I guess they look alike or whatever, shrimp, lobster, crab, cockroaches is of the sea. You're sitting there eating cockroaches. You ought to see the things that I see. I don't know if you might have seen it yourself on, on Facebook and, and, and Instagram and things like that. You know, people kill me saying that stuff. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. Only eat you know, fish, fish with scales or whatever, things like that. That's a ceremonial law. That's man's law. Okay, uh, you can eat anything you want to eat. Now, God told Peter when Peter saw that that sheep going up and down, I believe, what, three times. And Peter said, I don't need this kind of food. This food's dirty to, to my people. 
And God told him, God said, call nothing that I have created unclean. Okay, so I'm telling you guys listening now, whoever you may be, you might hear that and people say, "Mm, we're not supposed to eat this. We don't eat that. We don't eat pork. (laughs) Oh, my. Sorry. I just hit. I just stepped on some toes. Did not. Did I just step on some toes? On some toes, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. But there, hey, listen. God said, call nothing that he made unclean. Okay, so we understand that Jesus, I mean, yeah, we understand that, that the, 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 the demons were, were thrown into the pigs and the pigs threw themselves over the cliff and drowned themselves. But the purpose of that story was to let us know that Jesus dipped into the pockets of sinful people. Because the people who were watching the, 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 the hogs, the swine, that was their living. That's how they made money for their people. Okay, and Jesus is letting us know by that story that he can dip into your pockets if you misbehave yourself and you will lose everything that you had faith in if it wasn't him. Amen. Okay, verse 15, having abolished, okay, the flesh of the enemy and the law of commandments and ordinances for to make himself of twain to one man, it says, so making peace, okay, making you a new man, you now a new man. Once you accept Jesus Christ, you are a new human being, a new person, a new mind. Verse 16, and he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. He's talking about the church, the body of Christ, reconciliation, bringing the church back together, the cross of Christ. You've got to remember now, years ago, what, what, excuse me, to over 2,000 years ago, people met in homes. The church was in the house. They had, they had uh, church services in each one another's homes, which I believe we're going back to, to be honest with you. The way it's looking, yeah, we're going back. Okay, and what he did was he brought everybody back together. So now they can say they're Christians, they follow Christ, and they can open up their churches and, 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 and accept new people coming and preaching the word. And it goes, um, uh, verse 17, he came and preached peace to you, which were far off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit, as the spirit of the Most High, unto the Father. Access, he is the mediator. Jesus Christ is a mediator between man and God. There is no other. So if you're trying to get to God through anybody else, forgive me, and no, it wasn't Mary either. And no, it's not, it's not wood, stubble, stone, or hay. It's not idols. It's not statues. If you are trying to get in touch with God in any other kind of way, you are not doing it the correct way, but it's not going to work. Because God said, look, God said, believe in my son or you won't hear from me. It's that simple. If you can't listen to my son, you're surely not going to pay attention to me. You're foul. Get away. I don't know you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man goes to the Father but by me. Jesus is trying to tell us that this is how his God does it. And if you, it, his father doesn't, and if you don't do it, then you're not going to make it. And the Bible even says anybody who tries to get to heaven any other way is a thief. Okay? There's people who think, well, I can get to heaven. No, I don't. I could do anything. I can live any way I want to. Just do it. We're supposed to say, we're just supposed to just do it. Live our lives any way we want to. We'll worry about that when we get there. But guess what? If you don't believe in God and, and worship him on this side of the grave, you're not going to make it on the other side. So do it now. Except Jesus Christ is your Savior right now. You're not going to make it. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers. He says, once you accept the Lord and, and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, he says, uh, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and in the household of God. You are now part of the body. You're not a schism or a ism. You are now part of the body. You're not... Uh, there's no diabetes in the body of Christ. There's no arthritis in the body of Christ. But when you try to get in, that's what you are. You're like a disease. If you don't, oh my God, thank you. I didn't mean to go there. Thank you, Father. But if you're trying to enter, my God, if you're trying to enter the body of Christ without going through Jesus, you're like a disease. My God, my God. 
And all you're going to do is tear the, by God, tear the body down. Arthritis, diabetes. Dermatitis. Alopecia. Fibromyalgia, cancer. Okay, everything that you can think of. That is what you are like trying to get to God without Christ. And God does not see sinners unless they accept his son. God's not going to accept you. Because look, if you're diabetes and fibromyalgia and you're trying to get to God and you go through Jesus first, Jesus is going to clean you up and you will get to see God. My God, that was for somebody. If it was just for one person, that was for somebody. Thank you, Father, that made it all good. Amen. For through him, uh, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Okay, and then it goes, what is that, 20? And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. That means you are, look, anybody that can't sit under uh, an apostle, a pastor, a teacher, a preacher, anybody that can't sit under somebody, anybody that can't sit under a leader will never be a leader. Because you have to learn. Okay, talking about the apostles and everybody here. Verse 20, and you're built upon okay, for the found, okay, verse 21, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto, fitly framed together, fitly framed together. Not one person high and better than the other one. Everybody's holding hands here unto a holy temple in the Lord. Not just a house, not just a place. Holy. God said, be ye holy for I am holy. That doesn't mean go out and get sloppy, drunk in a bar or something to start or cuss, cuss like a banshee and then call yourself holy. You ain't holy. You have a problem. There's a schism there. In the last verse, and I'm through, it says, in whom ye are also, uh, you also are builded together for a habit for what? God has all of us come together like this through Jesus Christ for what? A habitation of God through the Spirit. He lives in us. He dwells in us. You are the Spirit's indwelling. The Spirit of the Most High God lives in you. You are His spiritual temple. You can look in uh, Hebrews 3, 6, and uh, you can look in uh, chapter 2, verse 22. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, you are now, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, guess what? You now have God in you. So yeah, now you can brag. Amen. Now you can brag. You say, yeah, I'm all in the bag of chips because I have God in me. God is good. God is awesome. When I make a mistake, he straightens it up and does it for me, does it the right way. Amen. So if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I apologize for my sins. I'm so sorry. Please teach me. Be my Savior. Love me. Guide me. Show me the things I need to know. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Amen. And if you've done that, welcome to that body of Christ I was just preaching to you about. Amen. <laughs> welcome to the body. Remember, you're not schisms and isms and diabetes and all kind of diseases and cancer. You are cleaned up now with a new mind, a right mind. Find a Bible-believing, tongue-talking church. Join that church and learn of Him. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope this, this bless somebody. Father God, for all those that are listening, give them an extra special blessing today and, and show them that you mean good in their lives and they have to go through your son in order to get to you. There is a rank. There is a way, even just like the military, you just can't go to the general without speaking to the, the, the other leaders first, the sergeants and, and, and the, the, the gunnery sergeants. and We have to go through a certain rank to get to you and Jesus is it. Amen. And we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you for being loving and being kind like that. In Jesus' holy name, amen. God bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, and give you grace and give you peace. And always remember, Jesus is Lord.